Today, we're going to understand the anatomy and physiology of the stellate ganglion block. All right, so just a little bit about the structure and function of the stellate ganglion, kind of where it's located. So, um, so you can see here, the stellate ganglion is housed in your sympathetic chain. So over here to the left, you can see that, that yellow chain that runs down the side of the spine. Um, this chain can um, kind of demonstrate the, the layout of the, the nerve bundles that run um, alongside the spine. And so it kind of makes a little more sense when we talk about our approach um, and how we, how we inject and how we get around and near that stellate ganglion. Um, so you see that middle cervical region there near C5, C6, C7, kind of that right around C6 um, bundle. So that's usually our target is the fascia that is surrounding that little bundle. Um, and so just a little fun fact that the name is derived um, from stellate, meaning star-shaped. So you can kind of see those little star-like projections there um, in that middle cervical ganglion. Um, and then I feel like the significance of the stellate ganglion block can really be better understood um, by first discussing the sympathetic nervous system. Um, so this is a little example of your nervous system. So you have your autonomic nervous system, which controls the basic functions of your body automatically. So that's without you having to prompt it by, you know, telling it to do something. Um, so your autonomic nervous system is kind of like this umbrella and it can further be, it can be further broken down into uh, two systems. So your sympathetic and your parasympathetic. So your sympathetic nervous system regulates your fight or flight, which is um, common when we start talking about the the stellate ganglion um, block procedure. So you can see here the sympathetic nerves, what they control. So they can cause dilated pupils. Um, they can stop your salivation or, or slow the salivation and increase your heart rate, um, relax the airway so more air can kind of get through. Um, they can slow down the activity of the stomach and the gallbladder and the intestines um, and also relax the bladder and secrete, um, very importantly, secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine. Um, and then you see kind of the opposite there, the parasympathetic does pretty much the opposite of all of that. So um, it's can start making a little more sense when we start, you know, talking more about the, the purpose of the stellate ganglion block and what we're doing during that, that time frame of kind of resetting. Um, we're trying to reset that, that sympathetic response. So that fight or flight response. So of course your sympathetic is considered the fight or flight, but since it's completely opposite, your parasympathetic is considered the rest and digest. It's a good way to remember it. So a little bit more about how it works. So this is a nice example of the norepinephrine pathway in your brain. So when your sympathetic nervous system, that on switch can get flipped on and then it doesn't get turned off. Um, it can kind of, it can release an excess of norepinephrine which can lead to those symptoms that patients can experience of anxiety and hypervigilance, um, disturbed sleep and increased heart rate, kind of like heart fluttering, um, almost like panic attack symptoms sometimes, and really any other symptoms related to PTSD. So by us doing this block, we then give the body a chance to reduce that norepinephrine release, which that's kind of your reset of the fight or flight response. Um, which is via deactivation of the amygdala, um, which is considered your control or your fear control center in your brain. And you can see it there. It's the little purple. Um, it's yeah, that little purple um, spot there. Um, and you can kind of see how the norepinephrine can pulse through different parts of the brain and how that can affect um, different systems. So a little bit more just about some indications. You know, there's so many reasons that we've we can use this uh, stellate ganglion procedure, but um, a lot of the common ones that we see, um, post-herpetic neuralgia, I've definitely seen that, chronic post-surgical pain, um, Raynaud disease, orofacial pain, um, phantom limb syndrome, cluster and vascular headaches, um, PTSD, and all the symptoms that kind of come, come with that. Um, Meniere syndrome, um, and then the refractory cardiac arrhythmias, such as uh, POTS is a good example, of the POTS. Um, also long COVID, this has quite uh, become quite common for us to um, work on these symptoms that are now shown to be related to the dysautonomia driven by hyperinflammation induced sympathetic overdrive. Um, and then also hot flashes that are associated with menopause. Um, and here, just importantly, it's nice to look at some of the contraindications. Um, of course, a recent history of a myocardial infarction, um, coagulopathy, 
um, which would require blood thinning medication. So it's important um, to consider that. And patients with pre-existing cardiac conduction blockades uh, and glaucoma. And so the procedure itself here. Um, so of course, the patient is prepped um, with an IV catheter. Uh, vital signs are obtained and, and monitored throughout the entire procedure and after. Um, and then consents, of course, are explained, obtained, questions asked, answered, all of that prior to the procedure. So we start um, with the patient laying flat, supine. Um, they have their head toward, turned toward um, the um, ultrasound machine so they can see the entire process if they wish. Um, they don't have to, but... We then pl place the probe, the ultrasound probe here laterally to visualize the anterior aspect of Shaw's uh, tubercle at the C6 transverse process. Several structures are identified whenever we're doing this. So we're looking at um, several different pieces of the neck, of course, before we just go right in and inject. So we can visualize the carotid artery, the internal jugular vein, the thyroid gland, the trachea, the longus coli, longus capitis muscle, um, the paravertebral fascia the roots of um, really any of the spinal nerves, but C5, C6, C7, right in there, and then the transverse process of C6. Um, so using an in-plane approach, meaning we're, we're injecting in the plane of the visualization, um, the needle is placed on the lateral aspect of the neck. The tip of the needle reaches the paravertebral fascia, which I'll show you in the next slide, of the longus coli muscle, which is located between the posterior aspect of the carotid artery and then the tip of the C6 anterior tubercle. We then perform negative aspiration prior to injecting the anesthetic to ensure we're in the correct place and we're not in a vessel. Um, once the correct placement is confirmed, then we inject the full volume of the anesthetic, which is ropivacaine. And here is a nice example. So this is a picture of my left stellate ganglion block that I had done recently. So you can see these kind of shadows um, in the bottom of the screen. Those are the vertebrae. The big circle that you see that has the needle right in the center of it there, that is the little pond that we create. Um, that's the, the ropivacaine that has created a little um, pond around that, that stellate ganglion. You can see the vessels there. But that paravertebral fascia is the area that that needle is in. Okay, and then this is also after my block. So this is what a successful block can look like. So you, these are expected signs. So the meiosis, anhydrosis, ptosis, and flushing. Um, this, you know, says flushing of the extremities, but there's also in that affected side um, some flushing and a little bit of stuffiness. You can feel a little bit of like nasal congestion. It's not unexpected. Um, you see that drooping of the eyelid, the constricted pupil, um, and then some other signs that you might experience, a lump, kind of like a little marshmallow feeling in your throat, heavy sensation in the head and neck. So just kind of, you can sense, um, kind of just feel your head a little bit more. <laughs> um, dizziness possibly with standing or walking. So we're always quite cautious with that and potentially just a scratchy throat. Um, yeah, so that's just my references and I uh, hope you enjoyed a little review of the stellate ganglion block. Thanks.